also there is a question that what are the signs or timeline you could you know it's harsh related to you you quit as a professional so what traits you see in a kid at beginner levels that you know you want to you are aspiring to get to that professional tennis journey so what are those traits that somebody should look at a beginner level that you know these are the kids that we need to invest on see in terms of the beginner level the way i approach it is uh you know i come in with the perspective that every player has an equal opportunity and has equal potential to be a very good tennis player you know you don't know how that journey is going to unfold and uh, i'm not in in a position where i'm going to predict even though i see maybe one kid is more athletic than the other at the beginner level you want to provide very good instruction and fundamental skills and one of the things i recently learned in a sports a specific course was that for a sport like tennis that is a dynamic fast paced sport one of the things you can do at the beginner level is start you know getting the uh, reaction time the quickness the speed this skill is very important and you want to start training that because if they talk about the nervous system which i thought was very interesting because i you know they'd not heard about you know you, you think about fitness you think about strength muscles but they were talking about the nervous system and it made sense to me because in tennis you see the ball first your eyes see the eyes send a message to the brain and your body moves all of that has to happen extremely fast so you want to train that quickness you want to and so those are the things you can start doing at a beginner level to get the players you know developing the skills to be successful as the speed of the game increases so uh, you know i would focus less on trying to figure out which kid is you know standing out it give it your best with every child give them the best opportunity the best coaching that you can let them put their heart into it and ultimately you know they're going to grow and and out of that they're going to be your champions and so forth and that will play out that would be how you know i i i would address uh, the situation yeah well uh, you know harsh talked about nerves nervous system but you know i'd say footwork footwork is uh, you know probably just as important and if you look at federer an incredible training routine that you know the fact that he was able to emerge from 6 six, six months um, off for surgery and come back and win the australian open when he was 37 i mean that was possible because of his incredible training regimen and you know he doesn't seem as if he's a guy who's really putting a lot of work in at the gym but i can tell you he does so uh you know that side you know if you if you watch his training videos it's amazing I, he really focuses massively on the footwork and the fleetness of foot is of course a huge element of the game and and of course you know just reflects some of those things i think everything can be worked on all of those aspects can be worked on those are physical uh, aspects that you can work on but uh, i am of course a pure amateur so let's leave it to the real pros like us to talk about this and and also if i may add uh, to a previous point on you know uh, if i look at it from a global view in terms of the player development system you know you're going to get that once in a generation athlete a player that's going to be at the very very top of junior tennis you know by 13 14 or maybe 17 they're clearly demonstrating world class potential but that is as uh, pk uncle said a rarity you know most of your talent pool may not be that advanced at that age doesn't mean they don't have the potential to break through to the international level they're just maybe taking a little bit more time so you got to have a system to support them and if as a system you only look at the one player who's standing out you know that to me is not a viable way that you develop talent in your country you cannot just say oh this one player is so amazing that we you know they're going to become yes they're going to become great players you have to develop your talent pool which is going to be you know not, most of them are not go- you cannot expect your junior talent to be so so good that you know the, the, most of them may not even reach the grand slam level at the junior 17 17 18 but you still have four five years to develop and nurture them this is what i see in the us this is what i see in europe they're not just focusing on their top 
they have a system in place and they know that players can break through at 21 22 they're okay yeah. with players not performing that that's okay you know every player matures differently but their players are coming through 24 25 also where are we you know in that system yeah, and the, the 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 in the indian context 18 year old indian player is on their own you know yeah. so if they're not fortunate that some sponsorship comes by or some help comes by or you know um uh, so so then they're just they they they've lost you know we've lost our talent our talent has gone into other fields that's right there are so, uh, many indian tennis players who have gone into other fields and are are not prospering there because that's where they saw opportunity but go ahead pk no so yeah, uh, yeah i i think we need to develop a you know world class coaching system as well you know if we have uh you know say 20 world class coaches uh or you know each of the regional bodies say mlta and you know uh delhi uh, lta etc each of them has uh has you know a core group of four or five class coaches then you know then you begin to have a system in place apart from that apart from coaching of course you need uh uh uh, a system of tournaments you have enough tournaments at different age groups and for the pros you know i mean one of the tra- tragic stories for this year you know the the year of the covid when at the end of covid when saket maineni came back onto the pro tour he said that he had not touched a tennis racket between march and november i mean that is just shocking okay that's one shocking thing the other one was up bhamri two years away from the, from the circuit he had nobody to practice with in delhi he was practicing with juniors i mean you know this is just crazy you know the fact that we have a legacy but we've let that legacy go to seed is evident in this i mean in europe you didn't have uh, professional tournaments going on but you had lots of club level type tournaments that were you know really good quality so when uh, the circuit resumed in august the european players were all ready the american players were ready to play the indian players except those who had got stuck in somewhere else were not ready so i mean we really have a you know this demonstrates that our system is totally broken and really needs to be addressed so our players you know if you look at ram kumar ramanathan he is you know he basically at the age of 18 moved to germany uh, uh and then you know others have moved to spain so you go to countries where there is a working system you either go to college in america or you go to spain or germany you basically train there and you know training in spain you know lots of uh, world class players go to spain not not just from india from all over the place so uh that right now spain has Uh, has a really good ecosystem for training uh, but uh, uh, don't we i mean we we need we are losing the legacy and this is what really gets me that uh, we had this tremendous legacy and heritage we're losing it because the system is broken 